he actually changed my mind uh, quite a bit on the subject. Did I, you think it could be a threat? Now you don't. No, on free will because oh, free I you. I never like before I met Lex. Like yesterday, before that, I thought that free will was just uh, an illusion and everything. It's a result of causality, right? Right. Determin determinism. Determinism. That's yeah. right. Uh, a lot of people don't know, but that, that's called determinism. But Lex came up with a like very good argument, and now I I'm not so sure anymore. I'm not so I sure. I think both things are true. I think it's like many things involving human beings. There's not an absolute in one side or the other. For sure, free will is a thing. Because we both know about discipline. We both know how difficult it is. Like, you know more than anybody how difficult it is when you're in, like, a full training camp and you're exhausted, but you know you have the work to, to, that you have to do. And there's some people that will find a way out of that work. They'll they'll quit or they'll they'll not answer their phone or they'll take time off. And then there's other people that will just bite down and deal with it and, yeah. and be uncomfortable but do the work. That's free will. That's that's discipline. There's something, but why can you do it, and why can other people not do it? Like, what about how much of your personality was instilled upon you because of your genetics, because of your life experiences, because of the environment that you you grew up in? How much of it was the people that you experienced when you were younger that showed you the value and the benefit of hard work? And how many of the people that you mirrored were lazy and and then and found excuses? And maybe you maybe you lean towards them. Like, how much of determination Determinism is true. How much of free will is true? It's a balance. There's a, there's a lot of both things. Uh, that's that's right. I you know in a mechanical world, if a car breaks, we're not gonna say this. The car decide to, to to break. Right. Or if a tree is fall down, we, we're not gonna say the trees decide to break. Maybe the asymmetry of the tree may, makes it falls down. Maybe there's a reason why. But I feel that us as human beings, sometimes our ego want us to be in control of the universe, which is, I do not believe it's the case. So that's why I, I tend to, before I met Lex, I was 100% convinced there is no free will. And, uh, you know, ev everything is de determined by causality. Now I'm not so sure because about we, we talk about consciousness, what it is, and, and he had some incredible argument and he made me see a different point of view that I never, Never seen before. Well, just think about this. Think about how many people seek out inspiration. Think about how valuable it is. Like Matt Frazier was on my podcast a couple of weeks ago. He was a five-time CrossFit champion. And uh, one of the things that he does now, he has this art collection that he's selling on, on his website. And all it's all these inspirational quotes. And the idea is to put up this art with all these inspirational quotes. And that will give you fuel to get through your workouts or get through difficult things that you want to do in your life. We all are like, how many people post inspirational things online? And then how many people like, you know, read those things and get excited and it, it inspires them to action. There's some real cause and effect That's right. with, where there's inspiration and then there's action that's motivated by that inspiration, whether it's going to The Rock's Instagram and watch him at five o'clock in the morning, The Rock here working out <laughs> in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, 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 the church of iron, you know, like all the shit that that guy does or all these other Cam Haynes or David Goggins, all these other inspirational people that are online. Why are they so motivational why do so many people flock to them because there's there's a reality to the, the there's a give and take to these things and there's certain things that inspire you to action you can externally be motivated by those things it's not necessarily a hundred percent determinism there's there is some free will well however there's for example a, a coat that can inspire you but to me it doesn't have the same effect because of my background it doesn't get me to my core because right. I cannot rely really much to it. So it's a little bit of determinism because it's the causality that makes it who I am and who you are that makes it the, the effect of that coat as on you is different than it has on me. Or yeah. you could both grow up in the same environment. Like you could have a brother that's inspired by things that are not even remotely inspirational to you, but to him, it's everything. Whether it's music or whether it's a movie or a book or whatever it is. It's true. Like in, in, in families, very often you have someone who's going the right way and may perhaps one of his siblings will go the wrong way. Yeah. And we always 
tend to say, oh, we don't understand because they've been raised the same way, but they did not. Yeah. The, the, the moment you, you take a, one of your kid in your arm and the other one is looking at, 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 at the kid that you're, you know, it's, it changed everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, it it's does. It's very hard to understand. I, but but I, I'm not saying that I, I'm convinced that there is no free will, but I, I don't know now. He, did, he didn't completely convince me. He didn't completely make me change my mind, but he, he, he's got his point in. And now, man, I, I don't know. I think the real problem is people that are convinced one way or the other. That's the real problem because it is an open-ended on, on, uh, conversation. I don't think they're really... I, I think determinism is a real factor, but I also think will is a real factor too in that there's something about the open-ended variability of your decisions and what you decide to do and what you don't decide to do and there's moments in your life where you go oh, fucking i'm gonna go it i'm gonna go for it and when you do go for it your life changes like what makes you say fuck it i'm gonna go for it it depends entirely on what happened that day to you it depends entirely on how you feel whether or not you got rest yeah. whether or not you you broke up with a, a girlfriend or she broke up with you or you got fired from a job or you quit a job yeah. or you took on a new path in life like all those different things play a factor but there's also your own personal decision making that's based on your own personality and maybe your own life experiences there's so many things involved but for sure we all value discipline. We all value the ability to take action. Well, why do we do that? Because we know it's a variable. It comes and goes. It ebbs and flows. And sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. It's like, what is that expression? There's, a, there's an old expression. I don't remember who said it, but that inspiration is like bathing. It's effective, but you need to do it daily. Hmm. And I think there's something to that. It's like you need to seek out inspiration. And that's right. why, again, people like David Goggins are so inspirational because you can go to his page every day and that motherfucker's running 30 <laughs> miles a day. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. something to that. Like you get you get you get fuel out of that. There's people like my friend Cam Haynes, there's people or The Rock or whoever it is, they give you fuel. You yeah. see them training hard, you go, Oh, there's fuel in that. Yeah, they like, are, I want to go train. They are unbreakable. Yes. They have an unbreakable will and this is very uh inspirational. That's yeah. Right. That's right. So there's two things happening. There's one, it's like yeah, you are a lot of who you are because of genetics and because of life experience and because of all the things that have happened to you. But there's also decisions that you make. There's lines in the sand where you draw. There's moments where you say, I'm going to do something different now. I'm tired of this shit. Like people that are drunk their whole life and fucked up on drugs and then one day they go, enough, enough. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to change. And they have inspiration and then they go to a 12-step program and they meet other people that also have inspiration and they f feed off of each other i think it's important to face adversity at a, it helps if you face it at a very young age because it it's it molds you yeah especially if you able to overcome it because if you never face adversity before and when you face it for the first time and you're not prepared for it it can break you. Yes. you know? It can make you fold. Right. You see that very often in, in the career of a, in mixed martial art. Guy, they, they, some of the guys, they've been protected for too long, and then when they face a real challenge, they fold. Yes. Same thing in anything. And, and I think guys, perhaps like David Goggins, or you know, when I heard their backstories, because they faced adversity. They had to face an incredible amount of adversity, and they were able to overcome each of it. And they become stronger, because what doesn't kill you make you stronger, right? Or it fucks you up to the point where you're exactly. weaker than you were before. <laughs> exactly. But I think it, it's it, yeah. it's a little bit life. I think it could be like a fight if you gradually face adversity. Yes. It's like someone who's, you know, someone who's very, let's say someone who's very healthy, always pay everything for his kids. You know, his kids are not used to learn the 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 importance of hard work. Yes. You know what I mean? I think yes. it's very important, like, to, to, to teach that to, to kids, you know, yes. like the importance of hard work, the importance of adversity, uh, the importance of, you know, not to break them right when they're young and make them lose, lose their confidence because I believe confidence is everything, right? If you don't have, can have all the skills in the, in the world, but if you don't have confidence, it's like someone who has a lot of money in his bank account, but no way of accessing it. Right, right. So by facing adversity and that, uh, overcome it you building your confidence that's and why you, sports are so important for yeah kids. man and yeah. life and same thing in business you mm -hmm. you're gonna reach time that you, you're gonna go down and sometime you might you might 
go to the, the down deep. But if you face adversity before you're used to overcome those those obstacles, you'll bounce back from it. Yes. That's why I like I like I know a lot of people sometimes they 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 face adversity and they fall. They can't stand up from it. And, yeah. and some people like, hey, let's help them, let's help them. But if you help them, you always give them help, they will rely on that. They right. need to learn from themselves. And sometimes I think there is nothing better than reach the down deep to find out like how strong you are to come back from from that you know yeah well that's a lot of things that uh, people say when they're talking about experiencing drug addiction or alcoholism they have to hit rock bottom they hit rock bottom and then they realize they don't want to be there anymore and then they build themselves back up they that's experience right. that adversity and they overcome it that's it doesn't right. break them that's 